All right guys, so today I want to talk about something that's been driving me crazy for about six months and that is my reticulated python has been pushing on our enclosure trying to get out and messing up her face. And if you have a retic, you may have experienced the same thing. And if you haven't, it's possible that you will sometime in the future. So in this episode, I want to cover what's worked for me and what I've kind of heard out there in the reptile community for as far as curing and preventing a snake from pushing and messing up their face. So if you've been watching my videos, you know I have a reticulated python. Her name is Lucy. And I actually got her when she was almost, uh, she was pretty much the size of a hatchling. And I grew up, I didn't really know how big she was going to get. And when I first got her, I actually put her in, a, in this tub. This is an ARS 8018. And it was almost too big for her, I think, because she was really small. I have my biggest ball pythons down here in these tubs. And she did great. She didn't push at all as a young snake. And... She outgrew these, and when she was really cramped in there, I decided to get boa tubs like this one. So this is kind of the old style boa tub, and, and the newer style boa tub is a little bit smaller, and it fits under an ARS 5040 rack, and it's, it's a little bit narrower, a little bit uh, not quite as big, almost the, sa the same as the older bigger tub, boa tub. But it's a little bit smaller and she was <laughs> she was in here and she would barely fit she was coiled up and she'd almost fill half the tub and she just kept pushing and pushing and <laughs> I, I tried to I tried to treat her and what I what I actually used is this reptifogger here and I used some F10 I was using three mils of F10 in water and fogging her with that and it has a a little hose here <laughs> that hooks to the fogger and the F10 is, is basically a, a snake safe antiseptic that I was using and I started fogging her I think it was uh, well I started out I was fogging like every every month or so she'd get a little respiratory infection and her mouth would get messed up and it seemed like the fogger would pretty much take away the infection and then she'd get it again and it was getting to the point where I was fogging like every three or four days and and that didn't seem to to work and finally what I did is I moved her to a new enclosure a bigger enclosure and I'll show you that at the end kind of what I moved her into and finally moving to that bigger enclosure solved the problem so when I was using the F10 vapor coming out of that fogger Really what I was doing is I was trying to, to treat the end result of the problem without actually addressing the problem. And there's several problems I think. Uh, number one is that the enclosure needs to be the right size for the snake. And it really depends on the snake too. Some snakes are comfortable in their enclosure and some aren't. And I have another uh, reticulated python over here. And this one's pretty big. This is Sunny. I haven't opened this lately, so we'll see what kind of a mood he's in. This is a male, and he has never pushed on his enclosure at all. And he's not quite as friendly as Lucy. He's a little bit skittish, uh, not really used to people that much. And I don't really trust him that much. I've had some close calls with this. He's got an incredible feeding response. So I really have to watch out, and you can see his tongue when his when his tongue kind of wags really slow. That means um, he's not really in the best of moods. <laughs> you got to you got to kind of really watch him. But anyway, <laughs> usually usually once I open it up and he crawls around a little bit, he comes more into handling more, and he's fine. So, <laughs> but but you can see he really fills the tub. He's got a lot of room to move around in here, and and he's never really pushed and and some snakes even the same size they'll start pushing even at a smaller size in the same exact enclosure they'll start pushing and it really depends uh, I think it really depends on if the snake is comfortable in the enclosure and it really depends on the snake if he if he thinks he's comfortable then he won't push and if he's not comfortable he'll push to get out so one of the things that I've recently heard as a as a, as a possible cause for pushing is that uh, the the temperatures can be too hot and for example in this room I keep it about 82 degrees and some people recommend having a cold spot below 80 which is kind of interesting and here 
I would say that the snakes really can't get out of you know an 82 degree environment and I have the hotspot set for 88 and if you look at this setup over here he's actually on the left side of the tank over here and if, if I close this you can see that he's actually on the hot spot over here and this is a the hot spot goes basically straight back across the back so he's actually wanting to be hotter than 82 degrees <laughs> which is kind of interesting so in this case he's comfortable in this being you know 88 is the hot spot and he can kind of cool down to 82 in the cold spot uh, but Lucy it seems like when I have her out out there it seemed like one of the big reasons that she stopped pushing I think is not only that she had more room but she could get away from the hot spot and go below 80 degrees so I'd say one of the probably the most difficult things as far as reticulated pythons is the cost of the enclosures <laughs> let me tell you so 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 these little boa tubs they fit in these racks really nice they are about, I think they're about $300, $350 per level. And I actually bought them kind of after the fact, which means the shipping was about $300. So you're looking at, you know, $600 to $700 each level shipped, <laughs> which, is, which is kind of crazy to think about. You know, I have three of them. I have this one down here that's not really being used so I have, and that's the, that's the problem if they outgrow them and then you have um, tubs that you're really not using and, and I found it's really nice to have extra tubs when I'm cleaning Lucy's enclosure I can move her to one of those tubs and just as a temporary holding spot she's not comfortable in there long term but as far as the short term I can I can move her there and kind of jam her in there and she fits in there pretty good just for short term and uh, it's good to, as kind of a temporary holding spot just until I can clean her enclosure. Okay, so now I want to show you Lucy in her new enclosure. And for probably the last six months, her mouth was really swollen. It, it almost got to the point where, where she couldn't even hardly stick her tongue out. And she couldn't close her mouth. And she had probably, you know, a quarter of an inch, uh, a little bit more of it almost seemed like a gray matter that was just kind of uh, swollen uh, inflamed tissue inside of her mouth and she definitely had a respiratory infection you could hear her wheezing and coughing it was pretty bad then I was doing everything I could to, to, to fix it and finally I went with this enclosure out here the only problem is is you know everyone's like oh yeah, yeah just just buy a bigger enclosure well, you know, it's it's like, I mean, that enclosure with everything all together was about $1,000. So it's not just as easy as going out and buying another enclosure. You want to make sure you have the right enclosure and she's going to last in there for, for a while. You don't want to spend a lot of money and then find out she's going to outgrow it or it's not the right enclosure. And originally I was actually looking at some of the enclosures that kind of stack. I can't remember the brand name. Uh, I saw some at the reptile show. And I started talking to some retech guys at the reptile shows and they actually said don't get that enclosure because uh, the bottom isn't flat and it's really hard to clean those enclosures. So I was really kind of researching. I wanted to make sure I had the right enclosure. I got this one from Brace Exotics. They're, uh, they, they vend at the local shows so if I have any problems. I can go back to them or if I want another one or two or three more and stack them up I can I can add some as I go and I have the manufacturer right here I don't have to pay for shipping and it's, it's since it's a local company I really uh, like to I really like to stimulate the local economy by shopping and buying locally especially it's when I'm selling my snakes I like to sell locally too okay so here is Lucy's enclosure and I have it under lock and key just so she can't get out and nobody can get in. And <laughs> I haven't fed her in a couple weeks. And I think what she's doing now is she's actually I'm not quite sure what she's doing. <laughs> she's got her head right by that vent. I think it might be it might be a little too warm in here still. I have the heater at 84 and I kind of turned it down a little bit and she seemed a lot happier. I actually started it at 90 degrees and she was really pushing on it right when I did the, the, the substrate change and then I brought it down to 80 degrees and she seemed to be a lot happier and 
she almost stopped pushing immediately. But I think right now she might be in feeding mode because I haven't fed her for two weeks and she looks like <laughs> she is she's looking for a rat. And I have my snake hook here handy in case she starts getting wild. But she's definitely, it seems like ever since I brought the temperature down, she's really been um, not pushing at all. And especially this putting her in this big enclosure, it seemed like it really helped. Uh, I was like night and day between the other enclosure and this one as far as her being comfortable. So there are actually pros and cons to this enclosure. One of the biggest ones I think is spot cleaning. So I noticed way in the back she made a mess but <laughs> trying to actually um, let's see what kind of a mood she's in here. Well, she seems like she's in a pretty good mood. If I can <laughs> If I can get her moving around. So spot cleaning might be a challenge with this kind of an enclosure. Trying to get past her head and back to the back. It was so much easier with a tub that I could slide out. Instead of having to kind of compete with a snake and crawl in. <laughs> Especially when I really don't know what kind of a mood she's in. So I'm just going to take a snake hook here and just kind of give her a little, little nudge. And See what she's see what she's up to here. Usually, once you get them in handling mode, they're pretty good. But oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Spot cleaning is a new adventure for me for this enclosure. Although you know, I've seen some of these where they actually have a divider in the middle. And see, she's got a little bit of mess here. <laughs> I just clean up here throw in the trash. Not too bad. The other thing I noticed about this enclosure, I've only had it for just a few weeks, is that it seems like all, all the moisture <clears throat> evaporates from the hot end over there and it condenses on the cool end and it gets really soggy over here and really dry on the other side because it kind of it kind of just rains down from the top which is kind of interesting. And I think it's because it's just kind of cooler in my basement. If it wasn't so cool in my basement, I don't think I'd have a problem. But you can see her mouth is pretty much 100%. She doesn't really have the, the mouth infection that she had before. Let's see if I can... <laughs> yeah, this it seems like... For me, it's harder to handle the snake in here because you have to really get kind of close to the snake. But her mouth is... Pretty much 100%. You could tell before it was really swollen and inflamed. And now she's doing a lot better. So in addition to the enclosure size and the temperature, I would say uh, some people with smaller snakes actually, especially for retics, they like to have a shelf in here. And they say the shelf actually kind of gives them a place to perch. And I don't think I could put a shelf in here for this guy because... Uh, she is just so big. I don't. I don't really know if if she'd be comfortable climbing up on the shelf, especially with that heat panel up there. I don't think a shelf would work. But I think if you had a smaller snake or maybe a taller enclosure, a, sh a little shelf in the back would work, and they can get up on the shelf or they can go under the shelf. But I'm not sure it'll really work in this case. And she seems really happy. She's not pushing out. <laughs> She's not even coming out. She just kind of has her nose sticking out a little bit. So I just turned my overhead heat panel down to 80. Well it's 76 the actual temperature now because I've had the front glass open. But if, if you get it too cold I found that the snake actually tries to huddle up underneath it and you can tell they're, they're trying to get warmer because they know where the, the hot spot is. And if, if it gets too hot, they'll try to get away from it. And if it gets really, really too hot, then they'll actually start pushing. So another trick that I've seen some people do is that they will kind of fill the whole enclosure with some kind of shredded paper. And it gives them a little security. Or they'll put a whole bunch of hides in here and kind of mix it up to where they can't really... <laughs> they don't really feel like they're in a box that they need to push out of. They're just kind of lost in a whole kind of a maze of objects and I think that really helps to, to keep them from pushing too because 
Uh, it kind of throws them off and they don't really know where the, the door is, <laughs> I think. And she looks like she's going to come out a little bit, but oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know, it kind of freaks me out on this new enclosure that uh, it's, it's, I'm like right here face to face with the snake and she could kind of lunge out at me versus like if you're up above and you open the tub and <laughs> she is going to come out. And uh, and you ha I feel like I have more control pulling out the 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 tub and coming in from the top versus I don't know where she's going now. <laughs> she I don't really want her to come out, but yeah, she's a, she's a big girl. Yeah, uh, this could be interesting. <laughs> we have a snake loose in the house. Oh, I think I'm going to need two hands for this. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so that was kind of tricky trying to <laughs> shove her in there and slide the glass. I don't definitely don't like that as much as a top sliding glass or a top sliding tub where you can get in from the top. She's, <laughs> as you can tell, she's a little, uh, she's a little escape artist. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it. So if you have a snake that's pushing, I would try a different enclosure. Sometimes the enclosure can be too big as well. So you can try a smaller enclosure. You can try a bigger enclosure. And a lot of retic guys say um, a lot of times they don't like uh, the, the bow tubs that slide open. They prefer a front sliding glass, which I thought was kind of interesting that you put them in, a, in an enclosure like that and just because it opens to the front instead of the top that they push less. So you can, you can try those, you can try changing the temperature, you can try adding a shelf, you can try to put a bunch of <laughs> stuff in the tank to kind of confuse them so they won't know really where the exit is. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.